So this worry factor is so big that we can start to literally get physically sick and panic attacks and depression. And then we get on meds and then we're more disconnected. It's just the loop cycle. This brings us to the next behavior that I see completely dovetailing right out of worry is anxiety. And I cannot tell you how many people that are in our society are on anti-anxiety something. Now I'm not knocking drugs. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying we are a society of anxiety because we worry and we have stress and that leapfrogs us right into what we call anxiety. While worry ignites the fear of there is not enough, confused, scattered, disoriented energy additionally triggers the sense of loss of control. This is the next step that we dovetail right into. I don't have enough. There's too much. It's all crazy. I just don't have any control. I can't control anything. So within my mental and emotional body, I start to not feel like I have control. When we do not feel in control, we ultimately do not feel safe in our physical form or our emotional and mental form. A belief of not being safe can activate multiple physical, emotional symptoms experienced as anxiety. This can be everything from my heart palpitations to my head is aching to I'm sweating and my palms are sweating. I can't drive, I'm overwhelmed. My head is going crazy. So this pattern is all embedded in the original beliefs because beliefs and empathing completely work together. And so if we can disassemble some of this, we can start to see how crazy we can get, all starting with a belief, which by the way, at this point in your life, you probably have the capacity to let go of if you choose. And again, you don't ever have to choose. You can do whatever you want. You can live any way that you want to. Maybe anxiety and stress is your MO, but I highly suggest you maybe want to step back and take a peek at this because when we are overwhelmed with stressful emotions, taking on the thoughts and feelings of others, again, a step beyond empathy, we're taking it on. The empath can experience all of it as anxiety, as depression, fatigue. I cannot tell you how exhausted people are that come and see me. They are tired. And that can even lead to full panic attacks. It can absolutely relate to now I've got high blood pressure. Now I've got the high cholesterol. This will all revolve into more and more healing or non-healing into um, blood pressures go into then my immune system is getting re racked. I am struggling with all kinds of heart issues. Now I can't breathe. And my um, meds for my heart are all over the place. And I am now turning into a diabetic because everything's scooped up. One thing leads to another, to another, to another. So our healing and our holographicness needs to look at the very beginning stages of where this stuff all starts. And this is so common. I cannot tell you how common this stuff is because everybody is shown in some respect, the third belief I want to talk about. In some respect, we are raised with service to others mentality. And do not misunderstand, this is not a bad thing. But when it comes to empathing, we've taken this service to others mentality to a different level. And so this is important for us to understand the motivations behind our behavior. Yes, we humans are on this planet to serve ourselves and to serve others, to serve ourselves in a way of not selfishness, but energy that sets me up to be able to hold enough energy to help others. That's not how we're raised. Most of us are raised we're here to help everybody else first. And oh, by the way, if there's anything left for Suzanne at the end of the day, we'll just see. And most of the time there isn't if I'm busy helping others all day long and I'm not taking care of myself. We have a very distorted understanding of what selfish and self-love is. And so many, many of us have got a narrative or a learned belief from our upbringing for consistently putting others ahead of our own well-being. 
especially women, and I'm not calling out that men don't do this, but women, because of the mothering tactic, and it's not that men don't mother as well, fathering is the same, but we are always putting ourselves on the back burner to help everybody else. So it is very important that the empath shows up with some really big narratives that are very consistent. I think I mentioned this a little bit last month. There are very, very heightened words that come out of the empath's mouth like, I have to, I have to go do that. I need to go do that. I can't do that. I should go over there and do that. So we are constantly adjusting schedules, doing things for everybody else, looking for validation and accolades because we're out there working, working, working on behalf of everything and everybody. So these words, I have to, I need to, I can't, I should. These words indicate an empath with an energetic loss. It is a lose, lose when we're doing that kind of verbiage and mentality and energy base because the empath is ultimately depleting their own field to accomplish the action. This creates a loop pattern. And remember, when we're in worry and we are in anxiety, we are not feeling enough. So I will keep going and going and going and I will burn my candle at every single end. In fact, I won't even have a candle left because I'm worried that I'm not enough. So this is the loop pattern that is never going to end. There is never enough in our mind when we're in this pattern. So the empath can do a very, very fast paced critical change by stopping those words and thought patterns of I have to, I need to, I should, I can't and changing literally the verbiage that comes out of their mouth, but more so the thought behind it of, no, 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 I don't have to, I get to, I don't need to, I'm choosing to. So if I move to that, I'm moving from what we would call a fear-based reaction and action of lose-lose energy to a love-based win-win energy of I'm choosing this. I'm the one that is choosing this. And I'm choosing this with no conditional cords attached. And so this is very, very important for us to understand this because service to others and doing, 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 and being the one, being the one, being the one is very, very much what so many of us do with the distorted thinking that we're wonderful and we're fabulous. Now, 